so hello everyone it is toby from toby's urban sketch and thank you for joining me for another of our famous places sketches and this is another voted for by you guys and we are doing the houses of parliament on westminster now before i get started don't forget that i have recently published my new course so if you go to sketchloose.co.uk you will be able to find that new course and see if it interests you and it's all about developing ink work, developing your mark making. But with that little bit of self-promotion out of the way, let's enjoy ourselves with this sketch. So this, as you can see, is a brand new sketchbook. So this is a brand new moleskin, um, it's called a watercolour notebook. So it's 300 grams per square metre. It's got this lovely, lightly textured paper and a new month, new sketchbook. So um, that's why I'm in this. And I'm going to be doing this sketch with a, uh, a Tombow Fudensoki pen, or Fude, Fudensoki, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Pronounce Fude, apparently, when you shorten it down to, well, down to Fude. Um, and we'll be using a normal set of watercolours. Sorry for that noise. So, as I said, when I got you guys to have a vote on this, this is going to be a sort of dense ink uh, sketch with some very loose colours. And um, we've got this interesting reference image, which is a slightly different view um, from normal, uh, coming from you know down the river a little bit. And let's see what we can make of it. Obviously, it's so complicated and so dense of windows and ornateness that we're going to simplify it and have a lot of fun with doing so. Um, now, with this Fudensoki pen, we can create some very fine lines, but also some much bolder lines. So that's the other bit of exploring that we're going to be doing today. And I'm just going to start off right on the right of the, the reference here and do standard sort of little continuous bit of line work. And all I'm doing is finding these shapes. And see how the um, this, this pen can make very nice, pretty delicate marks, despite being also potentially very bold. I'm going to come under those, those first shapes, the sort of the roofs of the buildings, aren't they? And then I'm going to come under and just grab these trees and what we're trying to do is uh, contrast the kind of line work we're using so we've got slightly stiffer versus much more natural line work now we've got big burn of course which is so recognizable and that's the kind of the point of these sketches is not being afraid of recognizable things recognizing that we can sort of do our own thing with it and it will still be recognizable it doesn't have to just because everyone knows it doesn't suddenly mean that we have to make this thing like 100% perfect. We just got to find the features that we're trying to elevate and go with it. So I'm getting these big shapes first, for example. So we've got this kind of, we've got the rectangles, we've got the squares, we've got the circles. And the proportions are probably a bit off, but it, it's fine. We're, we're after the feel. Then sort of divided into these bits, and so I'm going to do those little divisions, paying a little bit of attention to the perspective here, sort of gradually flattens out as it comes to the horizon line at eye level. So the higher we get, the more these lines should be sloping like that. And then we can kind of just leave Big Ben for a little bit and come across. Now there's loads of these little tower objects, and all I'm going to do is kind of mark them in as really rough shapes and then come to this big tower and we're going to shrink it a little bit so that it doesn't you know outclass Big Ben and all we're doing is we're marking in approximate positions because we kind of gone well Big Ben's already got a lot of detail so why don't we just fade the detail off as we go and all I'm doing is marking in positions there's also a lot of, on the reference I've got here, there's obviously a lot of uh, building work going on. So we're going to just ignore that. And it's fine to ignore stuff. It's fine to, you know, make changes. And especially as we go further and further away and we care less about accuracy. And we can just decide to ignore some things going on. Now see how this here, we've got this side of the building, which is like this. And we've got the other side like this. And then this tower is back facing us. So just exaggerated that by changing the angle of perspective up a little bit. And then coming down, and it's it's angling back away from us. Then we've got all of these trees. And remember, this is the line where we use trees over there. 
And remember that also they're still on a perspective, so we're fading them off into the distance. And above them we've got these kind of modern tower blocks. So we just get them in and try and make them contrast, maybe a little bit more flow compared to here, a little bit more just flow going straight up, a bit of sort of confidence in modernity, just going pushing straight up into the sky. Then I'm going to come underneath. We kind of got this kind of panoramic feel. So now instead of doing the middle and all the detail, I'm going to come underneath and fill out that panorama. And the reason that's important is because we've got this lovely bridge with all its also lovely shapes. And again, we're just looking at position. So where do the arches sit relative to various points on our Westminster? And so we can see one's about here, one's about there. And then we basically hit the edge of the river. We can exaggerate the difference in angle because it's quite actually quite flat. If we just exaggerate the difference in angle, that will bring the river coming towards us. We can angle this last bit up. And then we can start just getting some shape under the bridge here. So we get the, again, the vision. This is where having a nice pen with a flexible nib like this, like a feudal, feudal pen can just suddenly produce instant contrast, instant shadow, and get that idea already. We can also use a little bit of hatching, which is a lovely way of doing these dense ink sketches, is just introducing some hatching. What I'm doing here is I'm making the these horizontal lines, which point out that this is a horizontal surface. Later we'll do some vertical lines on the vertical surfaces. What we can do now as well, we can because we've exaggerated this, we've got a big gap, but we can just exaggerate this line as well. And there's just this sort of complexity going on. And this is where we can use already a little bit of vertical hatching just to suggest something going on there. We can fill out some of that gap by you know, going back and editing our trees. That's also absolutely no problem. And Big Ben can come down a little bit. It's got a wide base here hasn't it so suddenly we've we've filled out this this little gap that we left no problem and then we've got all of this in between to start thinking about before that actually one more thing which i think is important let's get this this bus we can just suggest some little windows on it and why not add in another bus just to get that theme now the reason i'm doing that is because it's a nice shape. It's quite a simple thing to add in. And um, but you can imagine when we add the colours, a like this like punch of red here and here against all of these quite murky, greeny, creamy colours elsewhere. So these are gonna be really fun little punches of colour that we can add in. And then then we can start moving to adding working out what detail we're adding in elsewhere. So I'm gonna go and start doing basically a continuous line. And joining up some of these areas we had earlier and you can see it's just a repetitive pattern so we can just repeat and repeat till we get to this tower which isn't so much repetitive pattern so we can give it a bit more perspective we can give it some bigger windows just to pull it apart and again look I'm just taking ideas so it's got sort of got three levels and um, it's got two big windows at the top Little windows coming down, but I'm not, no, I'm not measuring the windows. I'm not doing the exact details. We're just getting the idea. As we come down here, and it's a very tight angle, it's just less and less detail, and also just fill that space with some simple, simple hatching. Same on this tower. So now we're splitting the sides by providing tone on one side and light on the other. There's a, there's some faint shadow. Uh, so it's not entirely invented, but there's also, you know, the idea of just artistic invention. We're just splitting aside the planes of this building by providing tone versus none. We can find some of these tall parts as well now. A little sort of roof on top, which is dark, so nice dark marks just to quickly fill that in. Tall shapes here. And by keeping these tall shapes consistent, we're showing very quickly to the viewer this is a tower this is a tower we can 
So we'll do added little street lamps and things to give us a sense of scale. You can't really see them, but with the eye of faith you can, and we know that there will be some things there. So for me, that's fine. And what else have we got to to fill out some of the space? Well, let's do a few more windows. Again, we don't have to fill the space, so we can leave it just with that many. I'm going to give a little bit more detail to our uh, Big Ben. So a bit more of these kind of columns going up. We can add hands to our clock. We can add these kind of little vertical marks. And on the other side, we can make it dark to exaggerate that contrast, just like here. And it's even more evident here than it is on this side. That's because this is forward and we can be bolder and more inventive with our marks. We can do the same on these roofs. We can exaggerate the two-sidedness of them with a really bold bit of mark making. And do we want detail on these towers? Let's do a tiny bit and see. Because my, my feeling is by leaving it uh, blank, we're pushing it quite nicely into the distance. So we can leave these blank, we can leave that with that much detail and, and nothing else. Maybe just give it a few of these tall structures going up. And how long have we been going? So about 10 minutes or so. So I'd say that's a pretty good sketch for 10 minutes. Pretty, pretty good bit of line work, pretty fun. I'm going to just introduce a bit more ink into our trees. I'm using the, the pen quite flat now. I'm, I'm hatching, but quite flat. So we're getting a much sort of bolder, definite kind of mark. And then I'm just going to continue our, our shoreline. And I'm just going to join it up there so that we get this feeling of the shoreline actually continuing properly through the image. A couple more little short buildings down here. We've got a roof here I'm going to leave out. And is there anything else? Well there's loads we could add isn't there? There's just You could just keep going and going but that's not the point of this kind of idea of sketching and sketching quickly. What I wanted to do is what I've done, a nice dense bit of ink work, finding the key features, um, simplifying and providing a lot of interest and then I promise some very loose colours. So I've got my size 2 quill brush here and let's start with a moody sky. It's quite a moody image and it's quite a moody place really isn't it? It's, um, so let's, let's stick with that mood. I'm going to take a little bit of moon glow, wonderful moody sky colour, lots of water as you can see and let's just pop it on and let's see what that does. And watercolours will paint themselves. Um, I'm going to actually, straight after this, I'm going to be filming a video about how to loosely apply colours, how to feel brave in loosely applying colours. And it's all about feeling the colours, letting the colours do what they want to do. All you have to do is provide them a little bit of inspiration and then, you know, you're off the hook. So we've got to add a little bit of cobalt in there just to, you know, make it not a night scene but a, a moody scene. Now I'm coming in with a bit of quinacridone deep gold. So quinacridone, it's quinacridone gold but it's got a more rich feeling to it and that I can just pop in to our building. To contrast that and to provide some kind of highlight I'm going to use Hansa yellow. So instead of quinacridone, Hansa yellow in some of the light sides of these buildings. And a touch maybe here and we can touch it in in a couple of places as well and then to bring some mood back a little bit of peril in violet just dropped in and it's kind of got the feel of peril in violet's got to feel like a, a modern color i think so let's just provide a tiny bit of tone on our modern skyscrapers and a bit of splashing and where have we got to? So we've got gaps here, haven't we? We've got this kind of tonal area here. We've got the kind of uh, the river, which is 
in a bit of a moody river as well. So just going to mix up some of those colours, a bit of perlene, a bit of the cobalt, a bit of the moon glow. And let's just push them around in the in the river and see what happens and facilitate some reflections as well. So reflections are just these colours coming, pooling, same colours we've used up here, pooling down in our river. And again, it's just a, a sort of matter of letting the colours do their thing, letting them paint themselves and providing them a little root, a little water bridge, that's what I often call it, a little water bridge to um, to come down here. Something a bit darker, a bit more moon glow, just to fill in this shadowy bank. And watch how beneath, because of the water, it's going to pull and move. And all I, can, I just connected there. See how I just connected it a little bit? And now it's it's doing its own thing. It's going to create some incredible shape, which I couldn't do on my own. Couldn't just add a tiny bit of shadow here, just to emphasize. We had this lovely yellow, but to emphasize that hatching that we did. We can do the same here and here. And because it's wet, this shadow is going to blend and move a lot more. Now we did mention all these greens and they're not that green in the in the reference but you know what I'm going to use uh, a lovely green here it's I've forgotten what it's called but it's from the I'll put a I'll try and remember to put a little caption or a comment it's from Daniel Smith's Primatech series so it's got a lovely granulation lovely character to it so again it's quite a moody green I think it's called genuine appetite uh, green but I'm not sure quite a moody green again it can reflect but it it's going to blend quite nicely with all these moody colors rather than something like I've got green gold in here and I've got a cascade green which quite punchy punchy greens now this yellow it's got a lovely pull to it so just drop it in in a couple of places just to give that extra highlight and what I'm really loving about this at the moment is as we move from here to the distance we're, we're kind of fading away and becoming more abstract and more moody and that's it for me that's a really lovely effect which is happening i'm going to just amp up the sky a little bit this is just a mix of our moon glow and cobalt again don't want to do too much but just a little bit and then a bit of mayan red mayan orange sorry mayan orange which is a surprisingly red color and look, there's our buses, which are going to seep into the surroundings and provide this kind of punch of warmth. Can actually add a tiny bit of Scarlet Lake in there as well. Scarlet Lake's much more like a primary red. I think the combination of the two and the movement that they're going to have will provide a lovely effect. And again, look, I just created what I'm calling a reflection by dropping a tiny bit of that red in here. Going to use that red in one other place on these chimneys. So one of my favourite concepts in colour is you know, if you're using a colour in one place, use it somewhere else to balance out. So we've got this red here, just a touch here, just balances it across. It stops it being too odd in one place. We've got the purple here and sort of tucked in here as well. We've got the yellow, the yellow, the yellow. And then the quinacridone gold. So it was, I'm doing the same thing everywhere. This green's here and here. And it's one of my sort of most important moments for colour is making sure when I touch in tiny bits of colour, I'm not just doing it in one place. Anyway, with that, I would say that this, this sketch is done. Obviously, it needs to dry for a while. But before it dries, I can always just pop my signature on and feel proud of what I have achieved. So... I'll let that dry and uh, you can see the dried image up now. Um, I hope you have enjoyed that. Um, I think I achieved what I set out to do. I think this is recognisable for what it is. I think it's got some lovely features. The big bend's looking great. The, uh, the red buses are doing exactly what I hoped they would. The colours have done their own thing. They're very abstract, but we've chosen them for specific reasons. And the line work is... Uh, dense and because of that density of line work that provides enough structure that we can get away with totally mad colors anyway i hope you've enjoyed that like i said do like subscribe um 
and as I mentioned at the beginning, I've got my new course out. Um, it's split into different chapters, and the first chapter is available at the moment, and that first chapter consists of five workshops, all about uh, different line work techniques. So uh, things like perspective, uh, loosening up, um, using shapes and structure. So five different themed workshops, all about how to develop our personal line work techniques. If you want to join me, then come to sketchloose.co.uk. If not, just stick with me here on YouTube and I will be here forever for free.